Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Mr. Smelly 1977 Fragrance Review Channel today. It's going to be one of my impromptu, pretty much unedited videos where I do a POV style video reviewing often a classic fragrance. And that is very much the case today because we are going to be reviewing this absolute gem from 1974. Is it perhaps the greatest release of the 1970s? It could. I, I think it's a strong contender for that title. Givenchy Gentleman 1974 release. We're going to talk about this beauty today. Before we do that, do not forget if you follow the link in the description, there's a link for myfragrancesamples.com. Use my code Mr. 15 for 15% across the site. The best place to get your fragrance samples, I think, in North America. So Givenchy Gentlemen, an absolute classic release from the house of Givenchy, the famous French house pioneered or started by Hubert Givenchy. Uh, before that, they had just made one masculine fragrance release, which was the equally beautiful and classic 1959 release, Monsieur de Givenchy, which is sometimes designated as a sheep scent or sometimes a citrus aromatic. It's a citrusy Sheep fragrance. It's absolutely elegant and beautiful. I really, really like Monsieur de Givenchy. You can still get a reissue version of that in the Parfums Mythique series, and I still say it's great. I've got the vintage bottle here, and it is an absolutely exquisite scent. So do check that one out, guys, if you're a fan of your old school style fragrances. So that one, perhaps uh, the Givenchy answer to or, or comparable scent to Chanel's amazing Pour Monsieur, which is a 1955 release. But let's talk about Gentlemen. So this one was made by perfumer Paul Leger, and uh, it really stands as a unique smelling perfume. There were many, many powerhouse fragrances coming out in the 70s and onwards into the 80s. We always talk about things like Polo Green that we can see in the background there from, uh, from Ralph Lauren. We talk about things like Antaeus and Coros from Chanel and uh, from, from uh, Yves Saint Laurent. These are great fragrances too. Givenchy Gentleman has its own unique characteristic. It's a woody aromatic fragrance, and I'm going to give you the note listing. Top notes are honey, cinnamon, rose, tarragon, bergamot, and lemon. Your mid notes are patchouli, cedar, orris root, and jasmine. In the base, you have leather, civet, oak moss, vetiver, musk, amber, and vanilla. So the tr tr typically long fragrance note listing that you get back from some of these old uh, school French style creations let's talk about why this one is so great but let's talk about availability first so th this is a vintage bottle i was very very lucky to find this a few years back online on ebay and you can see it was actually bought in harrods the uk's uh, big luxurious luxurious department store we have a price there for a 100 ml bottle of 32 pounds which is uh, considering harrods is not where you get it on a discount that's really really cheap so i don't know exactly i think it's a 1990s bottle this is this was my father's signature sent back in the 1970s and 80s and really was therefore my first experience of what a men's fragrance could or should sm smell like um, he often had the splash version i can't remember whether it said aftershave or eau de toilette because they would of course have had it in both versions but if you can get the version where the bottle looks just like this and it has this really really nice lovely pattern on the box that is the the vintage version that you want to get if you can you can see a real short note listing or ingredient listing, I should say, there. Um, nowadays, of course, they're obliged to tell you a lot more information than that, but here it just says um, alcohol, ethylene, parfum, blah, blah, blah. So this tells you this is old. Good luck finding this thing, though. Some people now well aware that it's a sought-after and rare fragrance, so you may be paying a lot on eBay. You can still get the modern version of this. Don't confuse it with Gentleman Givenchy, a more recent, I think, a 2017 release, which is an okay fragrance, but you can still get Gen uh, Givenchy Gentleman. I found it on UK sites around the sort of 30 to 50 pounds mark for the 50 or 100 ml bottle. And it's it's suffered a little bit with a reformulation or several. And so it, it is a little bit attenuated. It doesn't quite have the depth and richness, but most of what I'm saying here will pretty much still apply. You may still want to just check out the modern version. It's going to be much easier to find. Okay, so what's so great about this perfume it is a very gentlemanly refined fragrance we can see an image on the screen here of an original 1970s advert saying this is how the art of being a gentleman has evolved over the years first of all there was this then there was this then there was this and in the 1970s guys you need a Givenchy gentleman to be a gentleman well I doubt that it was that simple but it certainly does have a very refined elegant French old school air about it it is complex 
It is rich. It is hard to pick out many individual notes, obviously, but one of the dominant undertones here is definitely this patchouli note, the note of patchouli, very distinctive if you've smelt it. This note was used a lot by hippies, actually, in the late 60s. They would just scent themselves with patchouli. It was almost kind of an anti-fragrance thing of people who weren't buying fancy fragrances. They would use these individual oils to scent themselves, but this was harnessed and taken on board by perfumer Paul Leisure and included in this perfume. The honey note there, you def there is an undertone of sweetness, there's honey and there's vanilla in here, and there is a sort of smooth sweetness. We've also got uh, uh, sometimes described as a Russian leather note, and it is a very uh, masculine kind of smell overall. I don't pick up, obviously, on leather. It's not the leather accord, the suede or old note that you may find in things like Tuscan leather from Tom Ford. I think it is more a, a birch tar kind of accord being used to create a leathery type of feel. That's the, the old school way of doing it. There is a twist of lemon and bergamot in the opening. I get a kind of honeyed lemon thing, almost reminding me a tiny bit of cough syrup. Florals are definitely playing their role with the orris root, the jasmine, the rose, and of course we've got the lovely herbaceous tone of tarragon, often used to flavor fish or chicken, but here used in a mar. Uh, sensuous way in, in this beautiful smooth perfume if you'd like to see an extra video from me every week sign up to my patreon group it's only two dollars a month there's a link in the description and we have loads of interesting stuff going on in there I do a lot of fragrance stuff of course but I also talk about some other things to do with my life it's really fun and I hope to see you in there as I say you can follow the link in the description or just go to patreon and type in mr. smelly 1977 there is a civet note in the base along with musk. Some people talk about this one being animalic. I don't find it to be animalic in the hairy chest kind of way that we sometimes talk about Koros from Yves Saint Laurent being animal. I don't pick up on anything too pissy or um, urinal as some people type truck kind of say, but I do definitely get this rugged masculine undertone. I find this, I do find this to be quite a masculine fragrance. Some people on fragrances saying they feel it's uni unisex, but it was, it was definitely envisaged as the quintessence of how a man should smell back in the 1970s. It's rich, it's complex, it's got a beautiful combination of sweetness, spices, freshness, leather and cinnamon and uh, and also this very significant uh, patchouli note that I'm just experiencing as I smell it on my body now. It's an absolutely class fragrance that you really got to try if you like your old school gems. The great thing about this one guys is it doesn't fit into any other category okay. There are quite a few piney green mossy type fragrances from the 70s and 80s and I, I love many of them. Um, there are quite a few animalic type powerhouse fragrances that people will compare to Koros uh, and Teus as their Chanel you have Lapidus Pour Homme, you have uh, Francesco Smalto fragrance, the, the Balenciaga Pour Homme. Great, great fragrances, but they all fit into certain categories. You know, you can take things like Michel de Givenchy, if you like that. You might like Yves Saint Laurent Pour Homme. You're probably going to like Chanel's Pour Michel. You may well also enjoy Armani's Eau Pour Homme. And these are all fantastic classic fragrances, Dior's Eau Sauvage. But there's a certain similarity in style between those, and, and that's great. But this is really hard to pin it down and say it's much like anything else unique fantastic historic important just pick up the cheaper modern version if you can find that online for a cheap price and let me know what you think about Givenchy gentlemen if you've enjoyed this video because it's different to what a lot of other big creators are putting out there please do subscribe to the channel I try and give you a real variety we've got the live shows every weekend and we have videos like this on a single fragrance I know it won't get many views but I want to get my passion across to you guys and of course I do some of the more clickable list type videos too and I hope you enjoy all the variety I give you guys comment down below let me know what you think about this I'm going to leave it there for today great fragrance oh performance I should mention performance performance very I get really really nice longevity on this one but I don't find that it projects very strongly so it's it's okay in performance for me I like the longevity but I don't find it obnoxious so it is, would be actually be a great kind of dressed up scent maybe a little heavy for every day at work it, not not heavy in performance but the actual smells a bit too sensuous I think it's a great black tie event type of thing or if you're going to a wedding special occasions it's really good for that would a young lady today like it mm, bit risky not the not the safest date night scent because it does have an old school aura but hey I think it's pure class in a glass. I'll leave it there, guys. Remember, whatever you're doing in life, let's project. And sometimes life may stink, but we can always at least smell good. Goodbye.